wise God. May the wisdom that you've put in my heart be the right words for these your followers. Here's another story about wisdom. It was written by Mike Rapitsky. Once upon a time, there was a man who had car trouble near a monastery. He knocked on the door and asked the monks, My car broke down. Can I spend the night? The monks received him with great hospitality. They fed him a wonderful dinner and even fixed his car. They showed the man to a guest room for the night. As the man is about to fall asleep, he hears a strange sound. It sounds like nothing he's ever heard. It's a sound that draws him toward it. He can't sleep, wondering where the sound is coming from and what can you make it. So the next morning he asks the monks, what is that sound I heard last night? And they replied, we can't tell you, you're not a monk. The man leaves, but he can't forget the sound. Years later, he returns to the monastery and pleads with them to tell him. Yet again, they refuse. We can't tell you. You're not a monk. He demands, well then, tell me how I can become a monk. The monks reply. You must travel the earth and tell us how many blades of grass there are and the exact number of grains of sand. When you find these answers, you will be able to become a monk. So a man sets out to complete the assignment. After years of searching, he returns to the monastery as a gray-haired old man. He knocks on the door, and a monk answers. The man is taken before a gathering of all the monks. Here's what he said. In my quest to find what makes that beautiful sound, I've traveled the earth and found the answer to what you asked for. By design, the world is in a state of perpetual change. Only God knows what you ask. All we can do is know ourselves, and re that requires that we are honest and reflective and willing to strip away all self-deception. The monks reply, congratulations, you're now a monk. We'll now show you the way to the mystery of the sacred sound. And the monks lead him to a wooden door. But the hub, our head monk says, the sound is beyond that door. The monk then gives him a key to a stone door only to find behind the stone door a door made of ruby. And so it went as he needed keys for doors of emerald, pearl, and diamond. Finally, he came to a door made of solid gold. The sound was very clear and definite. The monk says, this is the last key to the last door. The man was so excited and anxious. He's lived his whole life desiring to discover the source of that beautiful, captivating, and seductive sound. With trembling hands, he unlocks the door, turns the knob, and pushes the door open. Falling to his ears, he's utterly amazed to discover the source of that haunting sound. But I can't tell it. You're not a monk. The man gained wisdom as he traveled the world, seeking the answer to the other monk's questions so that he might become one of them. True knowledge is found by looking inward at ourselves, being honest and reflective, and understanding that only God knows the answers to our world's questions. Answers to questions like, how many blades of grass there are? 
Well, how many grains of sand there might be? When the man offered these answers to the monks, they were willing to accept him into their community. And after opening the doors, the man was blessed to discover the mystery of where that beautiful sound came from. Sadly, by not sharing the source of the sound, the monks and now the man have heard, they fail to understand that sharing this knowledge will benefit others who might be soothed by such beautiful music. Most of us, when we head down a path, we begin by gathering wisdom in acute and accurate data. So we have a reasonable chance to accomplish what we've set out to do. Unlike the man whose purpose was to find wisdom so that he might become a monk, we prepare for our journey by gathering wisdom before we start. That wisdom will help to show us where we want to go and how we're going to get there. Our Old Testament reading this morning switches gears from the life of David, who has passed away, to his son Solomon. Solomon is a blessed young man, but he takes over the throne at a very young age. So in our reading, God commands Solomon to ask him for any blessing that he might want. And Solomon's answer is pleasing to God when he asks for an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between and be able to discern between good and evil for the purpose of governing these great people. Solomon was maybe in his late teens or early twenties when he ascended to the throne. So he might have been a bit secure about taking on the duties of the king. Unlike the man in the monastery who had to gain wisdom on his own, Solomon gains wisdom for his journey as king as a blessing from God. And he will depend on that blessing throughout his reign. Now the author of Ephesians is explaining to his readers that to live life, how to live life wisely. He warns them that if they continue to behave as they have in the past, they won't be able to enter the kingdom of God. For Paul, no one is eternally secure until they are secure in eternity. Rather than getting drunk on wine and singing body bar tunes, the audience is to, be, is to continue to be filled with the Spirit, singing praises to the Lord. In John's Gospel, we read the final portion of Jesus' I Am discourse. He explains again to the Jews who can follow him the wisdom of believing his message, this time because he's been sent from God. When he said, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. His words are troubling for us and for God because it's hard to grasp this concept of eternal life. Understand that first century Jews, and perhaps many of us today, are ashes to ashes and dust to dust people. We're born. We live out our life and we die. We don't understand what type of life Jesus is offering us. The crowd thinks that he's trying to be more than just a local rabbi. 
In last week's reading from John, the crowd complained that Jesus was one of them. Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Back in verse 41. They're unwilling to accept that this neighborhood carpenter turned rabbi could be anything more than the son of their neighbors. The wisdom of Jesus' words comes when we understand that he is speaking in terms of the spiritual realm when he says that his body is the true food and true food. Jesus is describing his identity as a connection with God when he calls himself the Son of Man. Now the crowd that surrounded him is offended because they're still living in the physical realm with the hope that Jesus can provide for their immediate needs of everyday life. The truth of all this is that life is a passage. It's a movement. And even though we debate whether we can change or whether we want change or not, the reality is that change is constant. That issue is not whether we want change, but what kind of change will it be? All we have to do is look in the mirror. We can't stop life where we want it and build a wall around it to keep it away. Botox is temporary. The covenant that God has commanded forever is that he is with us, redeeming us, renewing the earth, and recreating creation. When we live in the fear that we'll settle for less than what God wants for us, we have to turn to Psalm 11, verse 10, where the psalmist asserts that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There was a little girl who was flying her cart, kite on a windy March day. The dark clouds were hanging kind of low, We've all seen those kind of days. And she brought out so much string that her kite had disappeared in the clouds. The guy came along and asked the little girl what she was doing. She said, I'm flying my kite. And the man replied, I don't see it. She said, I can't see it. You can't see it. Well, then, how do you know it's there? She answered me. Every so often, it tugs at me. As Christians, we feel that tug. We hear that sound that so captivates us that we want to know its, hope, its source. We have this sense that something is missing in us that we cannot provide ourselves. So we set out to discover. The good news is that we've been held by it embraced by it all along. When God asks us what blessing he can give us, our wish has to be for wisdom. Wisdom to live a life after the example set by Jesus. God wants us to use our minds and develop our intellectual abilities. We are created in the image of God and we are to use all of those abilities with which we have been blessed. We should always thank them for our intellectual abilities, those abilities that help us live and love as Jesus taught. We thank God for the ability to develop our minds in ways that deepen our faith and enhance our expressions of love for God and for me. That's the real reason that we are here, to be a part of God's kingdom and use our wisdom to further his presence here on the